All right, we have more changes unfolding in the U.S. economy and over at the FOMC. Changes that sent markets haywire following Jerome Powell's press conference yesterday. Normally, fixed assets are boring to watch, right? But not now, not this year. Bond markets seem to make major moves almost every single day, and yet bond spreads have yet to price in a recession. Well, folks, that may be about to change as major revisions are scheduled to be released next week. Revisions put out by the BEA, the Bureau of Economic Analysis, each year on two critical data points, GDP and GDI, two data points that are supposed to move in tandem with one another. Well, they are doing anything but that right now. Wait until you see this. Wait till you see what this looks like, because we have the numbers, we have the data, as Morgan Stanley sent out a note yesterday warning their clients about this, and the likelihood of us falling into a recession in Q4 of 2023. But before we get started, if you're not already a subscriber of this channel, consider subscribing. It helps the channel out, and I appreciate your support. So so the FOMC folks, the September FOMC meetings now over and Jerome Powell sent the markets into a chaotic flurry yesterday as he said a few things that brought a level of confusion and uncertainty, something that most institutional investors were not expecting. One thing in particular, one statement that he made in response to a question from a Reuters reporter really caught people off guard. I'm going to play that exchange in a minute for you because it's worth hearing and probably the reason that we saw short-term interest rates explode higher basically the takeaway from this meeting even though they paused and decided to leave the overnight rate unchanged at five and a half percent they want us all to believe that this is the new normal that higher for longer is here to stay which would be great if it was true but remember folks trust in the federal reserve is at like an all-time low. You can see that just by looking at the bond market. Bond spreads do not believe that what they're hearing, which is not good, by the way, not good at all for the Fed's policy to work like they intend. They need the markets to react accordingly, but they are not. We can see it on this chart. Back when the Fed first announced takeoff last year was like the last time that credit spreads reacted like you'd expect. But since then, they seem to do the complete opposite of what you'd expect. Well, at yesterday's press conference, Jerome Powell appeared to let the cat out of the bag a bit when he was asked this question about a soft landing. And remember, six months ago, back in February of this year, he was signaling high confidence that a soft landing happens. Well, take a listen to this. And after, we're going to look at why he's being so careful now and what these upcoming revisions may have to do with it. Here he is. Um, would you call the soft landing now uh, a baseline expectation? No, no, uh, I would not do that. I, I would just say, what, what would I say about that? Um, I've always thought that the soft landing was, was a plausible outcome, that there was a path really to, to a soft landing. I've thought that and I've said that since we lifted off. It's also possible that it, the path has narrowed and it's widened apparently uh, Ultimately, um, it may, this may be decided by factors that are, that are outside our control at the end of the day. But I do think it's, I do think it's possible. Uh, and, you know, I also think, um, you know, this is why we're in a position to, to move carefully again, uh, that the fact that we've come this far uh, lets us really uh, proceed carefully, is, is it, as I keep saying. So I think... Um, you know, that's that's the end we're trying to achieve. Um, I wouldn't want to handicap the likelihood of it, though. It's not up to me to do that. Now, here's why they're moving so carefully right now. He said it a dozen times yesterday that they need to look at the data before deciding if they should hike again or not, right? Well, the reason is because of this one thing that never lies, folks, and in my opinion, is the best way to gauge what's coming in the short to midterm loan activity. I hear it every day when I speak to these debt shops who use our software that the lending business is all but dead right now, slowed to a crawl, and the data aligns with that sentiment. It's a bit hard to see in this chart, but the dark shaded areas show recessionary periods. The higher these lines go, the more loan activity is taking place and the easier it is to go out and find financing, to obtain financing for your business. But what do you notice when you look at this? What's missing right now? We have yet to officially, officially enter recession, but every single time we see banks 
tighten their lending standards to this extent, a recession follows shortly thereafter. But you'll also notice one more thing, something else. The recession start before peak, t peak tightening arrives. You can see that happen back in 2001, then again in 2008. And why is that? One word, folks, revisions. The word almost every accountant hates to hear. Well, revisions, they are coming and are scheduled to be released next week. The same thing led us into the recession at the end of 07. Remember at the time, all the talking heads and prognosticators were saying very similar things to what we hear and read today, that recession's unlikely, et cetera, et cetera. Then, then when the revisions come, or they came back then, boom, GDP looked completely different after. Well, there is something remarkably telling in the data leading up to next week, something I haven't heard anyone mention or talk much about, which gave Morgan Stanley so much pause, it brought them to send this warning note to their clients on Tuesday. This is what they sent. The note's titled, Downward GDP Revision Could Be Meaningful, written on Tuesday, two days ago. And what this is about is two key data points, GDP and GDI. We're all familiar with GDP, obviously, gross domestic product, the total market value of all the goods and services that are produced each quarter or each year. But GDI, gross domestic income, is what it sounds like, the total income that all sectors of our economy generate, all the payrolls or wages, profits, taxes, etc., which should run squarely in line with GDP. They should be moving in parallel to one another. If you look at a chart of these two data points, the line should be almost identical, move on top of each other. But when one gets out of whack, like you see in this chart that Morgan Stanley put together, when you see these two data points start to diverge and the spread widen to the point that it is right now, it means one thing, a big fat revision is coming. Here's what Morgan Stanley says is about to happen. They write this, the BEA publishes two measures that track economic activity, gross domestic product, GDP, and gross domestic income, GDI, both indicators aim to measure the same thing, the, do the domestic production of goods and services in a given period of time, but their approaches differ. While GDP measures production from the expenditure side of the equation, GDI keeps track of the income generated from production. The two paint vastly different economic pictures. GDI is pointing to contraction, while GDP implies that the economy has been expanding. The chart below shows the data series for both GDP and GDI annual rates back to 2003. As the data stand today, both series are highly correlated usually with a coefficient of 0.91. But the recent gap that's opened up is remarkable, they write. The largest in the last 20 years. GDP grew at a rate of 2.5% in Q2 year over year, whereas GDI declined by 0.5%. Now, what about the revision to GDP? Because that's what's important, right? The Fed's basing their interest rate decisions largely on how strong the economy is. They're trying to cool the economy down to cool down the rate of inflation. Well, here's what they say we can expect from this. The BEA will likely make a meaningful downward revision to GDP in its annual revision on September 28th. The gap between GDP and GDI is at a 20-year high, and our analysis of the last 20 annual revisions indicate that GDP will correct lower. Another reason for the Fed to end this hiking cycle, they say. So they tie this back to another reason that they believe the Fed is done, kaput, hiking, that we've already seen the last rate hike. And two videos ago, we showed you how Morgan Stanley's projecting the Fed holds rates at this five and a quarter, five and a half level until March of next year, in which time they believe we'll see the first 25 basis point cut. Well, it's clear that they don't buy anything that the Fed's saying, folks, as projecting the first cut by March means that their analysts believe something's wrong, something's afoot. And the end of this year will be bad, economically speaking. Bad is in hard landing, maybe. They write this. We think that downward revisions in GDP growth rates will be one of the factors keeping the Fed from hiking further, supporting our expectation that 5.375% is the peak federal funds rate in this cycle. Lower economic growth, the recent progress on inflation on the inflation front, and uncertainty surrounding the UAW strike and a potential government shutdown are likely to guide the Fed down the path of prudence, not to mention the dozens of other negative catalysts that are all beginning to converge this month, including the restart of student loan payments, which will begin to hurt discretionary spending, an average $308 a month gone from 44 million Americans' monthly budgets 
All of this starting next week. All right, if you enjoyed this video, got something out of it, press the like button. If you didn't, that's all right too. Either way, I appreciate you watching.